Today, 90 are on the street speaking to consumers about private medical insurance. Well, I'm actually a yoga teacher, so uh, I teach about six days a week, probably do about 12 or 13 classes a week. Fairly fit, but running mostly, and Pilates on a Friday. A combination of cardio and sort of medium, medium weight, weights. Swimming or uh, like rowing machine in a couple of weights. I go to the gym like maybe once, twice a week. I work out about four to five times a week at home, DVDs and YouTube. I go to the gym about three times a week. I play Ultimate Frisbee once a week as well, and my job's walking, so quite a lot of exercise, but quite a lot of cheese and cake as well. So I'm not too strict on it, but I enjoy it, and it's something that I feel keeps me healthy and alive. It varies from runs, gyms, all sorts of swims. Food-wise, eat pretty clean. I do a bit of yoga. Gym four to five times a week. I've got Strava. I enjoy road cycling a lot. I've got these watch, they measure how many steps I do. I guess for yoga I don't use that much technology. <laughs> I guess it's about coming away from it. <laughs> I use the Nike running app, map my run. There's also a app for CrossFitters called BoxWad, I think. I couldn't really be bothered with a Fitbit, so I think it's a lot of money. Um, to be honest, I'll, I'll just watch a few tutorials on YouTube. YouTube is, is massively helping me in fitness. I use YouTube videos. I sometimes log me food if I'm going for a crazy two weeks or something like that, but I'll just use the Samsung fitness app. It's just Samsung S Health, so like monitoring how much you walk and runs and stuff. Heart monitor, uh, that's about it really. I've used like uh, diet ones where it like, tracks your calories, like calorie counting kind of thing. I have a Garmin, a heart rate monitor, power meter for my bike, and I have, have a thing called Training Peaks, which monitors your fitness and if you're performing well and stuff like that. Occasionally, like my fitness power, uh, or something like that, I think it is. I will go on Instagram or YouTube and look at new CrossFit things and that's about it. I use the BBC app for the Couch to 5K. Probably going to start gym a bit more. Mental health as well as uh, physical health. So yeah, I think it's everything rolled into one. I hope that my exercise and my diet will, will be the two things that help me stay healthy. Eat bananas instead of croissants, you know. But some days I have a burger. What are you going to do? I do think about long term of working with old people. I've always been pretty active exercise wise, so really it's about making some adjustments with my diet to, to, to complement that really. I eat a lot less sugar than I have used to and things like that. I don't want to ever stop sort of doing some gentle exercise every week. I don't want to stop that now for as long as I can. My mum's a diabetic nurse, so we don't have much sugar as a family. Just try not to binge drink really. Just try and take care of my body, try take care of my mind spiritually, emotionally, physically. It's not something I focus on at the moment. I don't really monitor it as much as I probably should. Yeah, definitely. I want to try and live as long as I can, if I'm honest. And I don't want to be really frail and weak when I'm older. So if I do everything now, hopefully that'll pay off later on. I feel fully protected by the NHS. I guess my most difficult thing is the wait time with the NHS. And they sent me for physio and it was really, really poor physio. It's very much luck of the draw. You cannot get anything from NHS either until, even it's so bad, they don't care about you. It may have took longer than I'd liked, but I've got a good service. I feel the pressures that they're under and I just try not to add to that. No, they're covering everything that I need so far. So my pets both have things where they've needed referrals. It's taken quite a while. So that's been quite a problem in the NHS. When I've asked for an MRI scan, I felt like it's been quite a long time to wait to get that looked at. I think it's a free service, so you can't expect everything from it. And I think that's a problem with most people. They expect too much. Everything I've ever needed, I've got really. It doesn't have the funds, so it doesn't have the people. I feel fairly covered by the NHS. Because we can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, but a couple of months ago I've been looking for all family private insurance. It's about £100 a month. I've had it in the past and I would look again and again, I'd part of Booper and stuff, but that was always paid for and supported by my family. I've never used it, but I do for my job, uh, Booper. I rely on the NHS and I've, I think that's sufficient for me. I do. Yeah, it's all through the military. I do through work, yeah, Booper. I work in a hospital myself and that doesn't pay as much to be able to afford private medical insurance. I know a, a, a nurse who was in uh, work for Booper who actually felt that Booper healthcare wasn't superior in any way. I do think that private medical insurance is a good idea, but yeah, that's my opinion. 
I don't at the moment. If they could have an umbrella sort of thing that covers not only health but also maintenance. It's that speed of care that you get which is more attractive to me. I guess now that we have a son we've talked more about various medical insurances. A shorter waiting list. A bit more advertised. I don't really see it advertised. If they could provide a fix that I knew would definitely fix my knee, I would go for that. I'm very much a support of the NHS, so I don't think I would ever think about like leaving it. Fast, like a quick service, but that's what it does, isn't it? Definitely my lenses and teeth. Actually, if they if they kind of put it into your wages as a, as a deduction, like a pension, then that might be something I'd consider. Mm -hmm.